So this is our uh, last lab of this semester. Um, so this is more like a comprehensive lab that we're going to review um, some uh, basic analysis, creating maps, importing data, and also creating apps uh, by using ArcGIS. Uh, so in, in this lab, uh, we're going to create a COVID-19 uh, GIS app on ArcGIS Online. And basically, there are two steps. The first step is that we're going to import data and also editing the data, run some analysis, and also create maps in ArcGIS Pro. And the next, we're going to upload the map uh, from ArcGIS Pro to ArcGIS Online, and we will switch to ArcGIS Online to create and design our apps. OK, so first, let's open ArcGIS Pro and let's create a project. So as we did, uh, let's let as we always did, let's create uh, save the project into our OneDrive folder. And let's create a new uh, folder um, called Lab 12. And we are going to download two data sets. The first one is the population at the county level, uh, which uh, we have used that one multiple times in the previous labs. Um, the second one is a table that I uploaded, so which is the COVID data uh, for all the counties in the United States. And that data is from 1.3 acres. Uh, so if you're interested, you can check 1.3 acres and they update the data on a daily basis. Uh, we're going to use the data that was updated until I think this Monday. Okay, uh, so let's first go to uh, portal and let's first download the population data which is hosted by S3 so we go to living atlas and we search population state and also the second result which is ACS population variable boundaries is the one that we are looking for and that is hosted by S3 so let's drag that one to our project and it has three layers um, the state level, uh, the county level, and also the tract level. So let's just extract the county level to our local database. So let's select county data and also export features. And for this lab, we're interested in a VA only. So let's um, export data for the Virginia only. Okay. Um, uh, for the future, for, for like for the final project, uh, you can choose any state that you like, and you can export the data uh, for the state that you are interested. Okay, so let's first let's say we call it VA County, and let's run an expression. We see that we want the state is equal to Virginia. And let's keep the population only. So let's keep everything that including population. So remove everything that beneath the total population. So shift key and also remove. OK, so we keep the counties GUID, which is also the FIPS code, uh, area of the land, area of the water. Uh, state name, uh, county name, state name, and also county population. So we export that one to our local geodatabase and we call it VA County. And let's run it. Okay, and which is success. So now let's move the data from Living Atlas. Uh, let's zoom in to our VA counties. Okay, so now we have um, the population for each single county. So if we open this attribute, 
and we all see that the county name, uh, the county code, which is FIPS code, name, um, state, and also total population. Okay, uh, so we also want to enrich this data. So we also want the median house input of each county. Okay, remember we did similar uh, in one of the previous labs. So there are several ways. So we can either go to the all portal, download the income, or we can go to census data and also download the table of the income. And next we can use drawing, etc. And also an easy way is that we go to analysis and we use this enrich function. Okay, so it, this enrich function is very, very easy to use and I, I really like it. So let's say we want to use a V count as input. Okay, and the output is V count enrich, which is fine. And next, let's choose variables. So that makes the date enrich um, uh, very easy. So let's choose income. And of course, uh, for the final project, you can choose the other um, variables that you like. So you, you may think that re which is related to the COVID-19. So in this case, let's just assume that we want to use income. And to be more specific, we want to use the median household income. Okay. And also as a reminder that this tool is not free, so that will cost extra credits. So use this tool with cautious. Okay. So now let's run it. Okay, now this is uh, finished. So we have new layer called V County Enrich. Uh, let's remove the V County. Okay, and let's open the V County Enrich attribute table. Uh, and now we all see that we have the median household income that being added um, to this table. So that is here. So we have the 2020 median household income that for each single county. And that's nice. Okay, uh, so before we leave this one, so just one thing that I want to point out is that, so later on, we're going to draw in the COVID data to each single county based on this FIPS code. And now we can see that right now, uh, for this layer, the FIPS code is in a string format, but the COVID data that has the FIPS code in the integer format. So we need to add a new column on this V count enrich layer so that we need to convert this FIPS from the text format into integer format so that it will match the data type on the COVID data that we want to join together. Okay, so let's do that right now. So let's add a new field. Uh, remember, we have done this one uh, in the previous lab. Uh, let's call it FIPS integer so that we know that this data type is an integer that will match the COVID data that later on we are going to join with. And we'll keep the data as an uh, integer and also we save it. Okay. And then next, we are going to copy the FIPS code from this um, column that is text into our integer. So we go back to the tables. So this is a code that is in the text format. And this is a new field that we just added, which is the integer format. So let's copy the code from the text format. So let's right click and run this calculate field. Okay, so we know now we see that FIPS integer equals the value from this FIT, FIPS code, which is uh, was in the which is in the text format. And now let's run it. Okay, so now we can see that we have the FIP, FIPS code that is in the integer format. Okay, so which is great. Uh, now we can close this attribute table. Uh, so now let's download the COVID data. So let's go to uh, catalog. And here we are going to go to all portal. And we're looking for the COVID data that I provided, I uploaded. So let's search 
COVID-19 per county, GOG 215 fall 2020. And because there are a lot of COVID data available, so if we want to find out exactly the data I provided, so we need to type the phone name that COVID-19 per county, GOG fall 2020. And let's drag that one to our map. And you can see now we have new layer, which is empty, but we, we did have a new table. OK, and this table has um, a lot of records because it contains the cases, the updates for each single county on each single day. OK, it contains the data for each single county on each single day. So uh, this is a huge data is a huge table. So for on each single day for each state county, a number of people being infected, uh, deaths and also recovered. Some county they will report recovered number, some county will not. FIPS. OK, so this is a very huge table and uh, let's only Let's export the data that in VA only because we, because we want to reduce the the, uh, the size of the table. So let's right click data and also export. So we want to export the table to our local geo database and let's call it COVID VA. Okay, and let's run an SQL code. We see that where uh, the state is equal to Virginia. OK. And again, so if you are working on a different state, now this is time that you should um, choose different states. And let's run it. OK, and we can see it took a while, so like about four minutes uh, to finish. Uh, I guess that's because we're using running app stream, so it's it's a little bit slower. Uh, so now let's remove the layer that we just added and also the, the entire COVID data. And let's just look at the COVID data that in Virginia. And we can see we still have a lot of records. I mean, uh, 21,000 records that uh, record in Virginia. Again, that is because for each single day, for each single county um, that uh, the 1.3 website reported uh, uh, the number of cases and also uh, infected and also deaths. So that's why this data set is very huge. Uh, so if you join this one directly to our county data, so we're in the county uh, data, we have 133 counties. So that will generate still this number of records because for each county you have the data on multiple days okay so that data is is very very uh, huge um, so the advantage is that if you join covid data the original covid data to the county directly you can create dynamic maps that is showing that the number of cases change on each single day okay so if you want to create an video or animation like that uh, you can do that but i tried that one and uh, it's it's pretty slow i guess that is because again we're using app stream not a local arcgs um uh, arcgs pro and also because i think it's arcgs pro is still not optimized for the core class map to you to use as a as a as videos to create videos so uh, yes, you can join this one directly to the uh, uh, to this um, to the shapefile polygons. However, that will generate a very huge polygon. So, what we are going to do is that we are going to ag aggregate the data first. So, we want to calculate that for each single county, okay, or for each single FIPS, what is the total number of infected deaths and also recovered okay so we are going to run to, uh, summary statistics where we see that input data is the COVID table and the output is COVID statistics that's fine 
and we want to see that the number of the infected that's total that's that's that is exactly what we want and also number of deaths and that is also total uh, you can also see the number of the recovered however uh, in this data set Virginia does not report a number covered so that's why we see zeros it doesn't mean that no one being recovered in Virginia it just means that there's no data that available uh, for Virginia and for the case field uh, let's choose FIPS because which is also the unique um, ID for each single county okay and let's run it okay uh, so now this summary statistics is finished uh, let's open that attribute table so we can see this aggregated result and you can see that we have exactly 133 the same number of records that as the county level uh, so that reduce the number of records significantly and we can see for each county that how many records we have and also total infected and also total deaths and also total recovery again so for VA there's no such data being reported so that's why we say that those are zeros okay so let's remove um, the original VA data and now let's join this statistics which contains a total infected and also deaths and also re recovery uh, so for V, I I guess I'm going to ignore the recovery because it is not reported so join this one back to the Virginia enrich uh, polygon which has a total population and also has a median household income okay so let's do the join and add join and here we can see for the v in reach we are going to choose uh, remember that we just created fips integer so we use that one as a join field and also the join table is covid 19 statistics and also the output field is also FIPS, which is also integer um, on this table. Yes, this is also integer. And it is up to you. Do you want to keep all the target features or not? So if you want keep all the target features, and if that county has no data from this COVID table, uh, all those values will be now. Let's keep all the target feature and let's run it okay so now it is complete and now let's if we open this in reach data and we can see that now this layer also has uh, the total of infected and also total of deaths again the recovery all, all zeros uh, which because the data has not been reported okay uh, so we have all the data we want but um, let's export the data so that the joint result will be maintained in this data so let's export this this join feature as a new feature okay and this time I'm going to call it VA COVID and here we can choose that uh, whether or not we want some fields or not so for example the area of the land I want to keep that uh, oh, sorry I don't want to keep that area of the water uh, we can remove that one aggregation method those is from the enrich function we can ignore that okay so make sure we just keep the house media income um, ship length area uh, FIPS I think we just keep need one FIPS so let's remove this one uh, frequency no number infected yes number of deaths yes recovered um, okay let's keep that one although all the counties are zero okay and let's run it okay uh, so now we have the new feature being added which is COVID V COVID and if we open the attribute table we can see all the joint features are maintained uh, so we have the county name um, state name total population household income FIPS in integer format 
number infected, deaths, recovered. And because we export the data to GeoDatabase, so every time ArcGIS Pro will also calculate the length and North area for each single polygon. Okay, great. Um, so now let's close those attribute tables. And let's just keep the COVID V here and let's remove all the tables. Uh, to make sure that we are on the same page, so let's go to the project and open the database. So right now we have, we should have all those uh, data set. So the COVID is a, is a table that we extracted from all the COVID data of all the counties, but we only extracted the Virginia data set. And next we run an aggregation so that we want to get a total uh, number of the infection and also deaths for all the counties so that we, by using some risk statistics, uh, so that we have this table. Uh, the VA county contains the population of all the counties in VA, which was extracted from all the county of all, uh, from all the population of all the counties. And next, we added the median household income to the counties by using this enrich function. We also converted the FIPS from the string format into integer format, so by adding a new field and also copy the value from the uh, old uh, string format field into the new integer uh, format field. And next, we joined the statistics to this enrich function, and also we exported that joint feature as a new feature, so that, that is a COVID V COVID that we have now. Okay, so that is what we did so far. So we run some analysis, we download the data, we make some very simple editings. So now let's create, start to create maps. Uh, so let's save this project first. Um, and also let's change a uh, base map. So let's go to map and also let's choose. Uh, so you can choose any base map that you like. So I'm going to use a grid this time. Okay. Um, and again, I'm going to uncheck the reference. So let's first create the uh, number of the total number of deaths for each uh, county. So let's rename this one. Okay. Number of deaths. And let's go to appearance. And for this one, let's create a proportional sim uh, symbol map. Okay, and the field we are going to use is the sum of the deaths. Uh, let's also normalize that by the population. Normalized by the total population. Okay, and let's change the size. So for the maximal, let's put that one as 20. Okay, and the minimal as 4. That's that's okay. Um, okay, we can see that this region and also this region has very high ratio. Um, and also you can, of course, change the number of classes. Okay, uh, and also you can change the color. So let's say we, we change this one to uh, red. Okay, apply. Okay, uh, so this is our first layer in the map. And while this is updating, let's uh, make a copy and a paste. Okay, uh, let's see that we are going to create a second one. So this, for the second one, this will be infect infection or infected. And let's go to symbology, proportional symbol map. So here we are going to use uh, the sum of the infected and normalized by the total population. And let's choose a different color. Uh, so yeah, you can choose any color you like. 
So here I'm going to use uh, a yellow one. Okay, so now I have two layers. Uh, you can see uh, the first one. Okay, and also the second one. So you can see where they are more uh, high infection rate, I would say. Okay, Nef number of infections. Um, Okay, uh, so now we have two layers. One talking about number of infected per one million um, divided by the total population. And the second one is the number of deaths divided by total population. However, so normally uh, we, will, we, will, we will see that number of infected per one million people and also number of deaths per one million people. So we want to customize our normalization a little bit so actually we can do that as well. So let's go back here. So instead of using those division directly, so we can go to the uh, set expression here. Let's say we want to use the number of infected times 1 million and divide by total population. Okay. Uh, so this may not change how the map look like, but I believe that is easier to interpret. So uh, we can see that in this region, so it has high um, values at n number of people infected per 1 million people. So let's change that title as of the layer as well. Per 1 um, people. And let's do that one for the deaths as well. So per 1M and remember we haven't changed the for the deaths yet. So let's go here some of the deaths again times 1 million divided by the total population okay uh, so now we have two maps and I believe this map is easier to uh, interpret okay uh, so if we uncheck the number of infected, we can see wh which regions have higher number of uh, deaths per 1 million people. And if we look at the yellow one, we can see where we have more people being infected comparing to the population ratio. And next, let's say we, we also want to see the household income. So we may have a hypothesis saying that will the income be a factor? Okay, let me remove this one. Uh, so let's say copy this and paste that one. And we put this one to the bottom. And for the name, let's call it median income. And we go to the appearance and let's visualize median income. In this case, let's use a graduated color uh, where we just use the, the median household income. And I think natural break is, is fine. Uh, and also, uh, let's choose a color schema. So you can choose the one that you like. So I'm going to use blue. OK. OK, um, and because the household income uh, money, so we can also change the format of those labels. So if we go to the advanced uh, labels and for the format labels and we can choose. OK, we can choose the currency. OK, and so now you can see the currency have switched to dollars, which is nice. OK, uh, so let's save uh, this map again. And I think starting from here, uh, you can do something that is very interesting. So you can see that the places that have high median house income, uh, they tend to have, they, 
they do not have uh, have very high infection rate I would say uh, let's see for the deaths and also that is the same case and also if you like you can also create a chart okay for example you can create a uh, stack plot a uh, scat plot and to see the reach the relationship between the death ratio or the infection ratio versus the house meat income Okay, uh, so we're not going to do here, but because we want to create a dashboard, uh, sorry, uh, an online app. So let's see, make sure everything being saved. And let's share this map to ArcGIS Online. So in ArcGIS Pro, it's very to do that. We simply go to share. And we share this map layer. And this one, we can call it lab 12 map. And the summary, you can see COVID-19 in VA. And the tag, you can call it COVID-19. And also, let's keep all the data. And let's check we want to share it with everyone. Um, and also the folder. So if you don't have any folder, you can use your root folder, which is fine. And because I have already created a folder in advance, so I created this folder in Access Online. So I'm going to use that one. Uh, but you, if you don't, that's fine. So you can just use the, uh, the root folder. And let's run this analysis and see if we have any errors. And it looks like we don't have errors. We just have warnings. Um, and let's double click see if we can resolve that issue oops sorry uh i forgot it is on upstream so don't double click that one basically those are just warnings uh, which is fine so we can safely share the data without resolve those warnings okay so let's share it now you can see it has been it is publishing. OK, and we can see now um, this is success. Uh, so now we can save this project. And actually, we can close uh, ArcGIS Pro. And we are going to switch to ArcGIS Online. OK, so here, this is ArcGIS Online. And you may notice that I switched the browser as well. And because, as we said from the previous lab, that uh, I, ha I had some issues with ArcGIS Online by using Chrome. Uh, so for this ArcGIS Online part, uh, I'm using uh, Firefox. And anyway, do, do not use Chrome for this ArcGIS Online part. So let's sign in. And you can provide GMU email, uh, GM, uh, your email and your, your GMU ID and also your password. And next, if we go to the content, OK, and also remember, I saved everything to my 2024 folder. So if you don't have that folder, um, probably you will see your data in the root folder. In the file folder, you can see that uh, what we did uh, is that we uploaded all the layers, so the data from ArcGIS Pro to ArcGIS Online. We also add uploaded the map. And we can see for the map and also for the data, uh, they are public because that is what we said. OK. OK. And so this layer can be used by any other uh, people because it is public. So they can recreate, they can create their own maps uh, based on the, this data set. And this map is also public. So if we open it, so that will bring us to this uh, overview where you can edit those descriptions, mentor data, etc. And uh, you can also open this one in the map view. That is map view online. So let's open that. So here we, we come to the same interface that we did in the last week. So last week we loaded the data and then we created the maps. So this week we, we created the map in ArcGIS Pro and now you can see that we can view the maps in ArcGIS, in ArcGIS online. So here we have those three layers. OK, so the number of infected um, per 1 million people and also the number of deaths per 1 million people. Um, and also the median hold income. And we can see the legend are all here. Um, 
OK, uh, and also, again, you can check the attribute table. Uh, you can even run some an additional analysis, which is not recommended because that will normally are more expensive. And also, you can also change the style. So for example, if you are not happy with the colors when you export it, upload it to ArcGIS Online, you still have the option to do that. But right now, let's keep everything unchanged and let's go back to our uh, ArcGIS Online content. So now we have the data, we have the map, and make sure that data and also map are all public. And we're going to create an app. So app is kind of the online dashboard where you can have maps and you can have charts. OK, so let's click Create. And last week, we used this pre-configured apps. So those are uh, some templates you can use from an existing template. Uh, this week, we're going to customize our app by using this web app builders. Um, please feel free to try the other options like story map, dashboards, I believe dashboard size, and also experience and builder are something that's pretty new. Um, and let's try this one, web app builder. And we need to give it a title. Um, I'm just call it lab 12. And I still, I'm still going to use COVID and a summary so that is COVID in VA. And also, I will save that one, still keep that to my 2024 folder. Uh, however, you can choose any folder you like. OK, and uh, I'm going to click OK. And here uh, you need to choose which theme or which layout you like. Uh, so personally, I will use this one. OK, uh, dashboard theme uh, where you can add more visualizations or widgets uh, on those five uh, blocks. And this is a place where you can insert your maps. You can also add more tools uh, here. One, two, three, four, five, those five uh, tiny boxes. Uh, you can change the colors, styles, etc. Uh, you can change the layout. OK, uh, so. OK, so let's I'm, let's say I'm happy with this one and I'm next. We are going to choose the data or choose a map. So let's say we choose the web map. And then normally the latest map will be showing up the first. You can see the lab 11 map is here and also lab 12 map is here. So let's choose the lab 12 map and click OK. OK, and now you can see the map is now being loaded. OK, uh, of course, you can customize the maps, etc. like use current map view or use the uh, web maps default extent. Um, and also you can customize the visible skills. Uh, so I'm happy with the current settings, so I'm going to save it. OK, uh, next, let's add some widget. Uh, so, so there's a home page which is enabled uh, and also zoom bar which is also enabled. Uh, you can see if you want to enable the others like a full screen, overview, my location, etc. So, uh, so those will be enabled into those tiny small boxes. Of course you can add more widgets if you like. Um, and for those five big uh, boxes or the blocks, so that is here. So one, two, three, four, five. So those one, two, three, five is cre are corresponding to those five boxes. And I think those one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, four, and also five are corresponding to those tiny boxes. Let's say that I want to enable this one. OK, and uh, if I go to a preview. OK, so that is how my um, dashboard look like. So I think I enabled an overview, so which is here. OK, it's it's like a locator map. OK, and let's go back to the config. Uh, you can also view your maps on different devices. For example, how does that look like on iPhone?
Okay, so you have a better idea that if a people are viewing your apps on different mobile devices, so how the uh, how the app will look like. Okay, let's go back to the configure. I kind of regret for the colors, but that's fine. Okay, uh, for the first widget, so let's click the widget. And here you can see there are several options that you can choose. Um, and you don't, uh, so if, if you are interested in any of those options, you can just uh, check online and search, find out the in, uh, descriptions on ArcGIS uh, website, help website. So normally I would, I would use this one layer list. I would include that one because um, that will allow user to switch different layers. As, as we know here, those layers, we have multiple layers. So I would enable the first one as a layer list. So for example, if uh, the user want to check the number of the infected, so they can do that. Okay. Um, and if you like, you can also add the legend. So um, for example, for the second one, let's say if we add legend, we can see we want all the legend. OK, uh, for some reason that the legend for those two, the infected and also deaths are not updating. Uh, which I guess probably because we choose a customized field. Okay, because for the media income, you can see it looks like pretty nice. So yeah, that is something that probably we uh, we can double check later. But here, uh, since this is not working, so I'm going to remove the legend. So that gives us more options to add the other widget. So let's see here, let's add another one. Uh, the one that I like the most is uh, infographics. Okay, uh, for the infographics, and you can choose different type of the infographics. Um, uh, let's see that. Let's choose this one horizontal, and you can choose. Okay, so based on which layer you want to update. So let's say I want see the number of infected and here you, you can enable field by extent so that means uh, when you zoom in zoom out uh, they will change and for the text uh, so that will that is showing the total number of the people being infected so we can change that one see total infected and of course, you can choose the font size, etc. Um, and also for the visualization part, with, so this is the way we can choose the statistics. So let's say I want to sum, not total population, the total of the infected. Okay. And also minimal will be zero. The maximal will be, uh, let's just type the data here. So. You can see that the total is this one, so one nine zero. Okay, which actually is one nine zero eight one four. So that's the maximum value. Okay, and also for the descriptions, uh, you can add additional descriptions if you like. So that is, uh, um, if you if you don't like, you can just uncheck that. Okay. Uh, you can also change the colors, which I believe is in the display. Uh, so let's say we want to choose the color to be yellow. Okay, so mat to match the legend. And also you can add indicator. So I'm not going to do that. So let's keep that. Okay, so that is total number of infected. And you can see if you zoom to different places, okay, you can see the number is updating. Okay, so let's do a very quick one for the total of the deaths. Uh, so again, we are going to choose the infographic and let's choose the horizontal. 
uh, let's do total number of deaths. Okay, change the title, which is total deaths. Um, for the value, we are going to use the sum of the total deaths. And for the maximum value, that is 3702. And for the color, so let's choose the red. And we don't want descriptions. OK, uh, so that is the total number of the deaths. OK, uh, looks like we forgot to enable the field by extent. So now if you zoom in, uh, zoom out, and you can see both are being updated. All right, um, let's add another widget. So in this case, let's say we want to add um, a bar chart uh, so that we want to see um, uh, the house media income. Okay. Um, so that let's say is a household median income. And for the data, let's say we want to choose um, the household median income, which is this one. Okay. And uh, let's sort by the county name. And sorry, the object I filled, let's choose county so that we can see for each county we can see there. Um, let's sort, let's also sort by the household median income. Okay, which will make it easier. And you can choose descending or ascending. Um, for the color, so uh, I think the current color is fine, but just in case you want. You want to change the color, so this is where you can change the color. Um, and you can see by default, this is also filled by extent. Okay. So let's see household income. Uh, you can see all the counties actually. And if you zoom in, and you can see those counties. So those are the household income. OK, uh, so now we have uh, one more uh, block to fill. Um, so I think it is up to you. And also remember, we also have those uh, five tiny blocks that you can um, enable. Um, uh, so I, again, I think it is up to you. So uh, you can change the layout if you want to add more widgets. And for the last one, you can try to play uh, any of those blocks that you like. And some of those widgets are very expensive, I would say, and but yet very powerful. Um, so for example, uh, and also you can also try some very simple ones. For example, if you can, you can add an about widget. Or where you can just tile so the author information. OK, so who created this one? OK. And also data source, etc. So that will that that would be nice. Or if you don't like that, uh, you can also try the other one. So let's see. Uh, I can enable this business analysis. Uh, we are, we are create info uh, X and also um, summary key indicators and the data for any area. Uh, so this is kind of help information. So you can customize this helpful information. Um, you can limit so those options here. Uh, so let's say we just allow you to uh, drop a pin. And also for those uh, infographics, so they are going to create some infographics. So you can um, limit so what infographics they are, they are allowed to access. Again, those data are from S3, as you can see here. Um, and also, I say I don't want any shared infographics. And also, uh, you can choose which infographics are allowed. 
um, and now for the report uh, also the range do you allow them to calculate based on driving time or the walking time etc okay um, uh, so again you can customize this one as you like so let's hit OK so now we have this business uh, analysis uh, again this is very expensive so <laughs> uh, you can check the cre credit information if you like so where you can see that if I using geocoding which we are we will use that one in the infographic I believe so that it's the credits um, spatial analysis uh, infographics so that is 10 credits per 1000 view um, okay so just a basic idea that how much how expensive those are um, and we I think each of us has 200 credits okay so um, let's okay so let's save it and let's preview our uh, final app so here you can see we can enable and also disable different layers um, again i'm not sure that why the legend are not working uh, but the legend for the income seems look pretty good so if i'm interested in the death and also media income so if i zoom into different regions for example here i'm curious at why this place have such high death ratio okay and and also relative lower income okay uh, and, and also if you click this county and you can see that uh, the county name okay and when you select something actually uh, uh, the infographics is also ready okay so you, you can run this infographics for example uh, I want to look at the, uh, the at-risk population and I run this one. Oop, cannot be loaded. Okay, uh, so let me try it for a different method. So, uh, let's say we can use the pin that we enabled. So we add a pin here, and you can choose uh, oh, different mouse. And also, let's try. I want the. 10 minutes driving instance. Oh, let me do it again. Sorry. So add a pin. Uh, 10 minutes driving. Okay, so those are those areas. And let's try to run this at risk population. Okay, now we are costing the GME credits. Okay, so now you can see in this region, so what are the ask risk populations? Probably that, hopefully that will give you a better idea, better idea that why this place has low income and also high death ratio. And, and also we can try the report. So for example, for the same region, uh, I want to look at the uh, the people that age by sex and also by race. Let's run this report, uh, which will give us a PDF document. Okay, let's open it. So that the report that in this region. Okay, and finally, once it is saved and it is time to launch. Okay, so if we hit launch. So that is a URL that you should share uh, with other people. So let's copy this URL. Okay, so you can see we have a very nice um, app, which is also very expensive because when people are running those analysis, so that will cost your credits. So that URL that you need to share with others. Um, however, one thing that we need to do is that the final step is that let's go back to content. And you can see by default this is not public so we have so we have to make sure that all the data map and also app are public so let's just select everything and share and we see that is public okay again make sure data map and also app are public so now let's test so let's go to the private mode 
of your browser and let's paste that URL and let's see if we can view the URL. Okay, which is nice. Uh, and you can see here when you update, zoom in, zoom out. Um, okay, uh, you can switch to different layers. Uh, for this business analysis, I think uh, we can now run it because we are in a private mode and um, uh, the geo enriched and also network analysis uh, were disabled for guest users, which I think is, is something that is understandable because you know if any user, anyone want can run this analysis, then that will cost a huge amount of the credits of GMU. So if you want to run this analysis, I guess you have to be logged in with your GMU account. Okay, as we did here, and also you can run those analysis. Okay. Uh, 